And I think before we start, well, let me just tag my Discord. Live gang. We live. I'm trying to build an AI NPC simulator <laughs> type thing. Lamello. Lamello. Are we actually live? Yes, we are. How come? Normally I have a Twitch bot that tells everyone that I'm live. But I guess it's not working. Definitely, definitely live. Hello? Definitely Hello. Definitely Hello. Sounds a bit Hello. soft. But not too badly. Is it? I don't look up but at this pool. Badly. Is it? I don't look up at this pool. Badly. It's a bit soft, but um, I could turn my gain up. It is pretty high. I'm gonna leave it. If pe if people if it's too soft, people will complain, and uh, we'll go. Yo, banded toilet mini donut. Let's go. What's up? What's happening? On YouTube? Yes. Good to see you. Uh, Alright, before I do that, I just want, quickly want to say, I mean, you've probably seen it if you're in the AI news, but I know not everyone watches the AI news as closely as I do, but Open, I mean, Elon Musk is suing OpenAI. How cool is that? He's like doing this in public, he's asked for a jury, and the TLDR is, he's suing, him, suing them for abandoning the original mission for profit, and he's claiming that they might have actually achieved AGI internally and he pretty much wants all the board members to um, declare under oath that they haven't achieved AGI internally so it'll be super interesting I can't wait to see how this unfolds you didn't know yeah definitely look it up um, I saw this post by uh, Wes Ruff open AI sui sui uh, this one, Sam Altman lied, Elon so Musk um, opens an AI bombshell. We can quickly go through this video. He, Wes Ruff explains it really well. It's this, um, Elon Musk. So pretty much, Elon called out all these people, specifically Sam Altman and OpenAI, and um, he's demanding a jury, so he wants people to give their opinion. He's doing this to, you know, ensure AI safety, supposedly, and just... Also, the fact that um, OpenAI is claiming to be not-for-profit and stuff, so they're getting all these tax benefits and stuff, but they're actually um, operating for profit. Um, and he's saying that you know AGI is a threat to humanity, um, or something along those lines. Yeah, threat, a grave threat to humanity. Yeah, he does say that. Um, then he talks about how he founded OpenAI with Sam Altman, making for like with the promise that it would be um, open source and stuff and how he convinced Ilya who was one of like the leaders of research in the stuff at that time to kind of join OpenAI and like how that was largely due to um, Elon Musk. Also it mentions like QSTAR he kind of wants them to publicly um, tell stuff about QSTAR it's pretty cool. I'm uh, really keen to see how this goes. Yeah, the unfair business practices. Pretty much I just, yeah, summed up exactly what's gonna happen. Anyway, that's not the point of this stream. I just thought you guys should know that. I think it's one of the coolest, most important things that's happened today in um, AI. And as for the stream, I am going to be, oops, sorry. I'm going to be making an A, I NPC simulator type game. A I NPC simulator game. Um, I wonder if I can do this. Okay, yes. June says, "What's an AI NPC simulator?" Great question. Okay, I'll show you the inspiration. I'm pretty much copying this idea from. Um, AI reality TV this this game so it already exists but it's 2d I want to make a 3d version um, so pretty much mine's gonna be better no no, no competition hopefully we can uh, move um, what's the word collaborate in the future anyway so it's kind of like a TV show it's like a simulation 
of these NPC characters living in this world and you can um, pretty much buy a character, pay to have a character and you give it a, like a system prompt or like it's kind of information about it, its current purpose and some tasks that it has and it goes around this world living like an NPC character does. Um, talking to other people, you can see the conversations it has with other people. Um, I'm not sure what else other capabilities it has, but that's pretty much the idea. Now, um, I kind of want to take this idea but build it on a 3D engine that I have. So if you're an OG fan of me, you would know that I have this game that I tried to build a while ago called uh, Berry Game. Uh, this is it. And I kind of abandoned this, but I figure I could extend this to kind of work as a NPC simulator. So we're going to do that today. We'll see how long I can last with this project. I tend to always jump between projects. Um, so yes, yeah, this is day one. Let's see how long we go. I'm also like, I started working on Clickless Cage for the first time two days ago, but um, yeah, that's just the nature of how I work, jumping between a bazillion projects. Anyway, the most fun part of this was of like starting a new project is picking a name. So I did ask, um, I did ask ChatGPT4 to come up with some names and I've settled with NPC Sim. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go on to Cloudflare and buy the domain hopefully, let's see. Uh, add a site, can we buy a domain here? Enter your domain name, register a new domain, here we go. npcsim.com Jun, thank you. Nine dollars a year, let's go. I'll just buy it for one year for now. Doxed all my info there. Hold on, let me not dox any more info. Pay with PayPal. Did it work? didn't work. Why didn't it work? Oh, no, it worked. Nice. Okay. All done. And we have npcsim.com. Um, so now what I'm going to do next is, all right, let's get a, let's get a kind of notes going here. Let's get some notes going. Um, um, notes. Okay. Step one. Let's do it. Let's do a to do list. Plan development. That's what we're doing first. We're planning the development. So. Let's first analyze current state of project. So we have, oh, who's this? Someone was bashing me while I wasn't looking. We have, um, we have clicking, we have walking, which we don't need if they're gonna be NPCs. Abandoned toilet, yes, of course. Yo, um, so what do we do? We want, there's like a whole UI interface that we need. So we need, um, landing page. All right, let's start a Kanban board. Ixsoft, hi, are you building a game? Yes, 
Yes, I am. How do we add a Kanban board? Board view. This one. Yes, okay. Um, new database. Here we go. Uh, whoa. Actually, we should create a whole new thing here. All right, scrap this. One sec. I'm going to create a whole new document. Okay, here. MPC sim. One thing I don't like about Notion is like it's hard to highlight stuff sometimes. Hard to select, stuff, especially on mobile. Okay, anyway, MPC sim. Uh, let's create this board. How did we do that? Board view. New database. Um, yeah, board view is fine. To do, perfect. All right, card one. So we need a a way to create slash define new NPC NPC new characters. We'll call them characters. Characters flow. Um, boom, and then we also want to just have the basic loop for a character. So like, yeah, that's probably what I'll work on first is the basic loop. That sounds like a fun thing to do this stream. Uh, all right, so let's put that in progress along with analyze and plan development. Okay. A lot of description here. Inspired by reality TV, but 3D. Okay. Let's open up Berry Game. And we will run the front end here. Okay. Now, um, basic game loop. Let's define this. I figure we need to answer some questions like how does it decide where to walk? Um, and how does it decide what to say? Those are some good questions. I think that's what we'll start out with just walking and talking. Um, I think for what to say, it's like it can respond to messages in the global chat. Ben and Toilet says, won't this cost a lot to run? Are you using APIs? Are you talking about the chat aspect or just the general hosting of the game? Um, I think I can get it to be kind of cheap. Hopefully, we'll see. Like just using like GPT 3.5 and I don't know what options do we have. Let's have a look. I have I look at this kind of often, but maybe Mixtru. How does that compare to GPT three point five? Okay, quite a lot. We could probably get away with using some of these cheap, cheaper models like Perplexity's seven B model. I'll start off with um, OpenAI's 
chat GPT 3.5 because that's what I know and it'll be easy to set that up but we could probably save quite a bit like 12 cents versus um, 75 cents yeah that's like five times cheaper but anyway let's just get a basic version working first so this is currently a player but um, we're gonna spawn in we're gonna spawn in another player or we could use the yeah okay we'll use the this NPC so I already have an NPC but this is chatting hard-coded chat so this is this render NPC um, as you can see here it's got this talk random function and it just randoms a number and and talks this like hard-coded chat so what we want to do is kind of link this to OpenAI's chat GPT and have it talk based on um, kind of what's said in the chat I guess yo Ford how's it going it's going well had this new idea of making a NPC simulator game let's see how fast it, it will take um, to make it asked thank you for the follow all right so well how do we do this we are going to I kind of want to render their name as well um, so we go into this render other user component and where they have the chat bubble um, do we have something for we have chat bubble health chat bubble player chat bubble should we have their health their name I'm gonna extend chat bubble to be able to um, show their name Lima thank you for the um, follow color Ooh, we have color so if this is color red I refresh this will it start talking in red chat now talk please no it's not thanks for it appreciate you abandoned toilet says you could also train the AI on info so if a user for example talks to an AI how can I open my inventory to tell them how to that's cool yeah definitely there's a lot of ways we could take this in the future but I just want to get basic AI talking from chat GPT first um, okay so this color red didn't work I think we can do style um, and then uh, color red like this I think that'll work yes okay see that worked okay um what's how about we if I had color auto does that make it um, yellow auto red why is it complaining what did I do auto I don't know what I did auto is still red um, oh we can just okay 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 I got an idea here's how it's gonna work um, we're gonna do props dot color uh, props dot color and then we'll do props dot color otherwise we do yellow I think Hold on, let me see what the default color is player chat bubble it's it is yellow also yellow um, risk play thanks for the follow Jason and thank you for the follow how are you guys doing I'm gonna rename chat bubble to um, is there a way to re easily refactor in VS code I think there is although I never have um success doing it rename change all occurrences refactor here we go um whoa getting all these new followers pagana thank you tuximus thank you let's try solve a leave leak code problem together rq what's rq 
Um, I do not feel like doing a re re early code right now. Fuad says Alt Shift F. Real quick, uh, Alt Shift F. What did that do? I have no idea what that did. Hold on, it's definitely refactor. Move. It's only got move. All right, let's try re change all occurrences maybe to uh, what do I want to change it to uh, hover uh, above head text <laughs> above head text okay that didn't change all occurrences uh, what about in here files to include files to exclude viewers tree this is such a simple function. I, I'm surprised. It, like I don't know how to do it. I'm gonna ask um, ChatGPT. Fresh says, "Oh, you don't like Lee code? Um, I just like I'm just focusing on building this sim right now, so I don't really feel like doing Lee code. My apologies if that's what you wanted to see. Control Shift R. Nope, that opened up. Continue. Let's see um, how to refactor function name from every file VS code. Press F12. That's just renaming. Oh, you see, okay, apparently F2. F2. Oh, this is cool. Um, text over head. Oh, that actually worked. It renamed everything except the file name, but that can be easily renamed here. And then, oh, normally it asks me if I want to change the, oh, it automatically updated all the references. Okay. So if I refresh that, it should, actually, let's just add the name myself. So if we go into render NPC, render other user and we're gonna do user name equals null and then here we'll be like uh, user name and and oh, pretty much let's just copy let's just copy this username and and text overhead um, chat message is username and we'll do a color uh, equals white Bannon says super chat two euros nice do we get two euros thanks Bannon toilet you're a legend Let's see. Let's go. Thank you. Blizzard, what's up? Oh, you're a member. I was wondering how I got money from that thing. That's cool. I need to give you like cool permissions. Uh, I'm building this uh, AI NPC simulator game. So I'm going to have, have it. This is hard-coded chatting at the moment but I'm gonna link it with open AI and have different NPCs talking to each other um, without user input well, I mean they still could be user input but yeah Yoram thank you for the follow I'm just adding a name to this um, pl player here so we've added username in white and now we should hopefully just go here and go username equals big giant okay this is complaining um, what is it saying? Is that a TypeScript thing? Null or undefined? I think we have to come here and be like null or string. Wait. Uh, what if we do this? Okay, that worked. There we go. Big giant. 
And now when it talks, actually when it talks now, the text will be covering it. Yes. Okay, we need to move the text over or under it. Ford says, small question. Have you ever worked on semantic web and creating new ontologies or did videos about it? No, I haven't. The closest thing I've done to that is like, uh, Chris, thanks for the like is like um, kind of like vector a bit of like vector store searches I mean research for like rag systems okay I'm just gonna move this uh, username a bit low by having the text overhead function edited by offset position we'll do um props color maybe we shouldn't do props color props color per offset position oh y offset oh sweet we pass in y offset supposedly um through render mp render other user so Min and Merlin, thank you for the follow. So here, Y offset, we're just gonna reduce that by t by one. So hopefully now, okay, that's definitely too low. We'll reduce it by 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, 2.28, 2.8. Yeah, that looks good. Now we have the name. Perfect. Wizard says, can I work for you like for $5 completing your uncompleted projects? Yes, <laughs> that'd be good. I have a lot of uncompleted projects. Uh, thanks for the follow, Kiko. Um, This text is weird, huh? My live is flagged for personal information. That's probably a good thing. Repeated violations. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. That was an accident. Hmm. Oops. Anyway. Um. Oh, you saw a guy asking from work? Yeah, I probably leaked too much information on this stream, but you know, it is what it is. Yash Patel, hey, how are you doing? Okay, um, so I'm gonna make a new branch in my repository here and commit these small changes that we just did. I'm gonna move this text back up here. I don't like how this looks, this text. I'm gonna, we'll do that, I'll look at that later. Okay, five changes, chat bubble is removed to text overhead, text overhead, yes, render MPC, text overhead. Okay, looks good. Let's branch to MPC sim, MPC sim. Great and check out. Um, display username above head. Commit and push. Is it hard making chatbot using AI that acts in a certain way from one prefix statement like talk like your Snoop Dogg? Um, no, it's pretty easy. You just uh, put that in the system prompt. Yes, yeah, says, what happened to your browser automation project did it work uh, it's it's like 20% working has a long way to go um, that's just the nature with AI it's kind of unpredictable even with the same prompt and everything it can give you two completely different answers um, on two different runs so yeah I've kind of just put that on hold for now and now I'm distracted by building this AI sim game 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're working on at the moment. Jason and Ryo, thanks for the follows. So, so, okay. Um, we got our first NPC. Now we want him to talk through open AI. So let's figure out how to do that. My mouse just died and it's back. What am I doing? Rasaya, I'm building an AI NPC simulator game. Um, in the it, it was inspired by this AI reality TV game. Although this looks kind of boring, hopefully mine will be more exciting, but pretty much the, the idea is you can have your own NPC in this world and you give it like a task and a current purpose in life and it goes out living its own life and like talking to other NPCs, etc. Is it a game? Yeah, kind of a game, but in a way that you don't really control your character. You just create the character and it lives its own life. Nice, thank you for the follow. When you day AI sim game is actual AI in this. Is this actual AI? Oh, not yet, but it will be. Hopefully by the end of this stream, everything that Big Giant says will be generated through an LLM, ChatGPT. That's literally what I'm going to work on right now. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Frank, thank you for the follow. Blizzard, thank you for the super chat. Five euros for coffee. Thanks. Although it is nighttime, it's a bit late for coffee. I am drinking tea though, green tea. All right. Um, okay, so let me show you the code. It's definitely not AI at the moment. This is the chat code. Uh, where is the NPC? Here, this is the NPC chat code. Talk random. Generate a random number from 0 to 11. If 0, hello. If 1, say this. So pretty much it's generating random predefined text at the moment. But we're going to change this to talking from OpenAI. You ready? Let's do a let's do a countdown of how long this takes me. A timer. Um, timer. Timothy, looks cool. What are we watching? You're watching a master work. <laughs> no, like I'm coding a NPC. Using ChatGPT for products like this is expensive. Yeah, it can get expensive for sure. Um, I was looking at this leaderboard. I think we can get away with using a cheaper LLM, Mistral 7B, only 12 cents for a million tokens. But just to get things working, we're just going to use um, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is 75 cents per million tokens. But for something as simple, we don't need a very smart LLM, so it's fine. What would be cool is like you could pay more money to have a smarter LLM. That would actually be really cool. Uh, there's so many ideas that I have with this project. It's just cool. I'm very excited for this compared to... Like this is this is always like the curve, right? You got you start a project, and it's like here you got two axes. This is excitement over time, and then when you start a project, you're like, see, this is all you're thinking of all the cool ideas, and then reality hits, and you come across your first obstacle. You're like, wow, this is actually a lot harder than I thought, and then you have to spend days like doing the hard stuff and then you slowly get some traction and you know it's like kind of a bumpy ride but over time if things go well you keep going up hopefully i don't know we'll see we'll see how realistic that is what's the tech stack this is next.js no it's not it's not next.js it's react.js with react 3 fiber for the front end back end is node.js on serverless with a dynamo db table yash says is it possible to give npc agents and access to external internet. Yeah, definitely possible with like function calling. Um, you can give it web browsing capabilities. Okay, I've been talking a lot and not generating any stuff. I'm scared that when I start this timer, stopwatch, stopwatch, I'm going to um, just keep talking and not working. Which I'm okay to do a little bit of that, but not completely.
How do you get this full school? Is there a nice online online stopwatch? Let's see how, how this looks. Uh, oh, I've seen this. This is cool. This kind of looks better, I guess. Um, hold on. Wow, so hard for me. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put this here. It's a bit big. And we're gonna change this doing now to Wait, where's that doing now come from? Uh, here. Here, okay, we're gonna change this to integrate AI MPC any percent. So it's kind of like a speed run. <laughs> and um, from now on, I'm not answering what are you doing? <laughs> because it should say it here. I'm making a AI MPC. <laughs> JS, sorry. That that wasn't meant to be a a hate. Fresh says I didn't know React had a game front end language. Um uh, it's not meant for a game it's definitely not a game engine. I've kinda just made my own game engine kind of. Um Can we get a background for this? think so hold on filters color key yes crop bottom 50 200 yes there we go excellent all right integrate ai any percent You ready? Any questions? I'm gonna give three minutes for any questions before I start this because then I'll probably not try to answer too many questions. Kind of curious, what's the highest amount of usage bill you've got from OpenAI for API usage, approx number of requests you've made at that time? Uh, not much. I try to be, I'm very frugal, maybe like $10 in a day or something. And that was like, that was like using these autonomous AI agents to just run in loops for only like maybe five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Blizzard says, I get around $3,000 right now a month in API use, still low, but we're growing in traffic. Yeah, well, once you start opening to the public, yeah, it grows heaps. I've pretty much just like made, like either have really small projects that only use GPT 3.5 or, you know, only do private stuff. Tibo, hey, how you doing? Okay. You ready? We're gonna integrate this um, this OpenAI thing. Talk start. Okay. Okay. Uh, open AI call goes here. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna make a a backend call because we don't want to put our OpenAI credits on the front end. So I'll show you guys what my back end looks like. Oh my god, this is actually annoying with this here. Um, hold on. There must be a better way to do this timer. Or should we just not use the timer? Alright, screw the timer. <laughs> uh sorry guys. I'm gonna flip flop integrating um, open chat GBT in my game NPC hopefully that will update to an NPC okay I think that'll update what programming do we use this is pretty much all JavaScript stuff Let's zoom out here. Let's open the back end like this. CD back end. 
serverless offline. So this is how I run my backend offline with serverless framework. Now I think I need to kind of make sure that the front end po points to the back end. I think I do that by, I think I have a component called um, API. I have a lot of APIs. Hmm. API.tsx, yes. Um, node and development. You need to somehow put that in. Um, not sure how to do that. Let's ask ChatGPT. How can I set this flag? Forgotten how to do that. There'll be a huge market on these type of games. Yeah, I think it'll be very interesting how these games develop. Um, node and uh huh. I'm gonna make. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. We'll add a new script here. I'll call it SLS and um, set node environment and yarn dev. Okay, so now I'm pretty sure if I go yarn SLS. Wait. No, why is this running on this? Definitely something wrong here. Yeah. It should have said that it can't run on this port, but I guess it guess it doesn't. How can I get V to run on a specific port? Oh shit, Oli Q, yeah. Been so long. What's up? What are you up to? Any cool projects? How'd that slot cars thing go? Um, okay, so this is not answering my question. Let me copy the How can I get a V React project with the following scripts to run on a specific port? You're in a game competition. Oh, sick. Three weeks in the competition. Damn, can you tell us your idea? Dash dash port. Okay, I knew it would be that simple. Um, should we always put it on that port? Yeah, let's just always have it on port. I like 8,000. 8,000. Ryan and Nguyen, thank you for the follows. All right, let's see if that works. Yes, we're on port 8,000 now and hopefully it is it pointing to the how come I can't see what it's here we get web sockets here we go local host yeah eight wait messages yeah yes local host three thousand okay pointing to the local host now, which is good. Very good. Oh, I missed some messages. EACR, thanks for the follow. JW says, I've tried React for a couple of projects, but it turns out it's not for me. I'm going to try Angular. Whoa, don't try Angular. Try Vue first. <laughs> I don't know. I'm biased, but I like Vue more than Angular. But I guess Vue is kind of similar to React, so maybe you won't like it either. Um, I'm back on this project. Yes. But Oli, it's different now. We're gonna be making it um, fully NPC. So n no more player controlled characters. You you create an NPC and it interacts with the world for you. 
something along those lines. That's the that's the idea. It's going to be a lot of fun talking to AIs in the next GTA 6, yes. Why are you building Twitter, us, Almir? Uh, I'm not building Twitter. The burrito, hey! Have I seen Skyrim AI NPC? Yes, I have. Nguyen says, how can you show your screen and face live on TikTok? I use um, TikTok Live Studio along with um, OBS. Okay. I guess Angular will feel more natural because I'm coming from ASP.NET. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, all right, so we've got the back end, we've got the front end. Let's look at the back end code. Back end code. Okay, we have a chat JS. So this handles all the messages that come through on the chat room. And pretty much we're going to be doing this. So what kind of messages do we have? Connect to chat room, send message public, pretty, pretty much this. We're going to hijack this. Um, send message public. This is interesting actually because we're going to be intercepting a message from the server but displaying it as if it came from the NPC. JW says, what do you think about SolarJS? Um, I don't even know what that is, to be honest. Debrito says, would Grok make this better as the faster generation allows for a better conversation speed? Um. Maybe. So Grok is good at really long, generating really long things really fast, but the latency, I'm not sure if it's that different. We can have a look um, here. Latency. Yeah, so it's not even that fast. For, for us, because we're only generating like a sentence, the speed difference of the whole text generation isn't that big of a difference, I guess. Grok is still pretty fast, but like fireworks is the fastest. I guess, but um, even then, it's just like milliseconds, so shouldn't make too much of a difference. See why? Thanks for the follow. Okay. 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 What are we doing? Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how this will work. So. Um, didn't make any changes there. So pretty much the NPC will need to, hmm, this is getting kind of complex. Let me think. It needs to, let's, let's bring up paint. We're going to do a dark mode paint. I've seen, who's that guy? Pirate do dark mode. Yeah, sick. Sick. Um, and how do we make this bigger? Does that work? There used to be like a shortcut to make the brush bigger. I forget what it is. Was it the plus symbol? So where was the plus symbol? That doesn't seem to be working. Um, I don't know. Does anyone remember how to make the brush size bigger in paint? I guess it's not that big of a deal. We'll just keep this. Blizzard says Mistral is okay for my purposes. Yeah, I think Mistral is one of the best open source models. Here for the free code, <laughs> Whittington. <laughs> nice. Okay, we have NPC. Um, they're going to send a request to server and then the server is going to process that request with, we'll call this LLM, I don't want to 
the LLM who then responds to the server who then needs the MPC to render, right? So this part is just uh, like a WebSocket call, API call. That's easy. Same with this. Um, uh, okay, so the thing is my server is actually um, serverless. which means it's running on these things called lambda functions. And the shit thing about these is when they're called with API Gateway, they only have a 30 second timeout. And I know OpenAI is sometimes slow. So we need to design this in a bit better, well, a bit interestingly. Debrito says, how do you make the model respond like it's a character, not just a standard LLM? Yeah, system prompt, you're exactly right, system prompt. Fine tuning is too much because I wanna have many different characters with their own personality. So it'll be a lot of system prompts. Bro put two Ms. L M M. Oh shit! You're right. It's actually L L M. Large model, map model, <laughs> large language model. Yes. Does it need to be a WebSocket call? It'll be expensive. Um, no, WebSockets are actually cheaper. I think. I've already set it up so it's a WebSocket because it's a real time chat. So WebSockets are faster than having like REST API calls. Victor says you need. You can increase 30 seconds, but you need more than 30. Um, yeah, you can increase it if it's a lambda to a lambda, but um, if it's API gateway, which is kind of what we use, I think. That's what's 30 second timeout. <laughs> This drawing has gotten really good. Are you using Socket.io or WebSockets? Yeah, I'm using uh, serverless WebSockets, yeah. API Gateway gets expensive as you expand the number of concurrent connections through API Gateway. Yeah, but just this, it, just the speed versus um, REST is like the main reason why we're doing WebSockets. Is there appetite for P2P chat? Uh, I don't know, like gun JS. I don't know how that would work. Let me think about this. Essentially my thing is, okay, so the, the, when WebSockets get expensive is when they're active for too long. And that'll happen if I'm waiting for ChatGPT's response. So I'm not sure, does ChatGPT's API have like a callback or something or, or someone's already got to have figured this out. Let me, let me have, let's do some research. ChatGPT WebSocket, real time ChatGPT. Streaming assistant. Ooh, streaming. Real time chat GPT service supported conversations generate pictures. Do they have code? What is the use case? I'm building um, a game where you can talk, well, you're not going to be able to talk, but NPCs are going to be able to talk to each other, pretty much. Like, we can talk right now, but I'm going to be removing the playable character soon. It's going to be all NPCs. Um, 
I'm currently doing this for a game. We weren't able to get it working real time, even through WebSockets. There's always a bit of lag for the response, and we had to design around that. Yeah, I know there's going to be a bit of lag, but how long? Rafa, thank you for the follow. How long are we talking? I'm hoping it's less than three seconds. Less than, oh, okay. No, even if it's less than 10 seconds, that's good. Anything more than 10 seconds, definitely way too long. More than five seconds, probably too long as well. The issue is ChatGPT can take more than 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, I think it rarely will take more than 30 seconds, but yeah, it's it's possible. And then the other thing is like, if we can design it right now, such that we don't have an, a server waiting for OpenAI's response, that would be really good. So I'm just trying to design that part. It's like a few seconds. Okay, that's pretty good. But then we're doing speech synthesis. Yeah. Doesn't ChatGPT communicate with your web sockets? Yeah, I think so, because it does streaming output. Can you just forward the content as it comes through? Yes. Yes, I reckon, I reckon we can. I reckon we can. Um, should we look at their docs? Why don't their docs come up when I search ChatGPT WebSocket? API dogs. There's a GPT called API dogs. So help because it's a long standing request. Yeah. Bro, I hate this. I've been getting this all the time. Our system has detected unusual activity from your system. Boo. 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 Um, it only takes long if you don't stream the output. Big bear bottom. What are you saying, Blizzard? <laughs> that looks very. <laughs> if you're not worried about being chased by a ch oh, you're talking about the the game. Does he have a bear bottom? No, he's wearing pants. He's wearing shorts. Charles Titan. Yeah, he's not wearing pants, he's wearing shorts. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's reeling a Vision Pro app. Stop doing unusual activities, yes, my bad. Um, I just don't want to make an API call from the, from the web socket. That's my issue. I might have to. I need. I want to look at the docs. Why? Can, why is it so hard to find the docs? Maybe if I search Open AI docs, that's probably better. Yes, API references. Apple gave five million. Gave your studio five million dollars to port a game. That's so sick. I'm jealous. Which game are you porting? Uh, streaming. Okay. Uh, node uh, stream streaming response const stream await create for await chunk stream this doesn't really change anything right like it's still Like we might as well be doing the, like it's still gonna take the same time overall. It's just we'll get some tokens sooner. Like the first tokens sooner. 
but like the 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 whole turnaround time will probably still be the same. JW says I heard on good performance it would take on average seven seconds. That's too slow. I've given you motivation to finish your modular monolith architecture. Nice. I'm so happy. I like inspiring people. Some lame puzzle game. <laughs> oh, we're doing. Um, okay. Let's consult with ChatGPT. You are an expert web architect. Let's make this bigger for everyone. Web solution no expert software solutions architect i am building backend architecture for my game which uses websocket for chat communication i have introduced an ai character that can talk Um, no, let's say more. Oh, I've got to do this capture thing. Freaking TikTok. Oh, it actually minimizes this time. Great, they fixed that bug. Uh, who just followed me? I didn't get it. Oh, James, thank you for the follow. Lord Whittington, it's slow as F. We had to use another LLM. ChatGPT is not meant for games. Oh, look, we got all these experts here. Lord, which, um, which LLM are you using? Let me know. According to artificial analysis, we should probably be using uh, latency. Fireworks. Fireworks is the fastest in terms of latency. Ruckus is the fastest in terms of generation. But we're not generating that big of a thing, so I feel like fireworks could be the go. Should we? I've never really looked into fireworks AI. Let's have a look at their um, offering. Yo, Mark X, what's happening? Or Mar X, what's happening? I'm trying to build um, like AI chat into my game, into the NPCs of my game. I'm just architecting it at the moment. Try with Multion <laughs> to research for me. Yeah, gaming. I tried Multion last stream and it didn't work, unfortunately. I don't know if they've re restricted my access or what. Game we with Hitanj, hello. Justin C, Cloudflare, Cloudflare has an LLM. I didn't know that. Is that on this leaderboard? Cloud. It's not on this leaderboard, interesting. I love the way you have to learn to communicate with AI via chat on natural language. <laughs> Which game am I making? Um, It's gonna be called AISIM.com. Right now, there's nothing hosted there. I only bought the domain this stream, but pretty much it looks like this. Um, it's going to be 3D. You're going to be able to create NPC characters that you give a purpose to, and they live out your their lives and interact with other NPCs. That's the plan. Maybe try that open source Llama AI and adjust it. So do you have a prompt engineering database? Nope. I kind of just trial and error my prompts every time because I do so ch such different um, tasks all the time. So it's all different. Dada, hello. I don't know what you do. I want to know how to learn it from scratch. Yeah, man, this is, I've been doing tech stuff all my life, but pretty much learning I learn by curiosity so like ooh I want to make a game that's how I started I wanted to make flash games uh, then I would just search on the internet the internet has tutorials for everything like how do I make flash games start with beginner tutorials and then you move on can we download when it's done you won't have to download you can just you can play this demo right now if you go to alpha dot berry um, this demo is hosted and it's live and you can chat with other people but um, this it started off like as this and now I'm extending it to be an NPC game but yeah you can play this version of the game right now 
Next step to implement your idea is a Skyrim mod. Yeah, apparently there's already a Skyrim mod that you can talk to NPCs, but yeah, having them talk to each other is not something. Okay, we have a person that just joined, Berry Game. I wonder who this is. Hello, sir. Well, madam. Wow, they just started punching me, dude. That's so rude. That's so rude. I'm gonna punch them back. See how they like it. Ooh. Ooh. But there's no death mechanic, though. So you can punch me all you want, but I won't die. Let's punch this person. Wow, tag team. Rude. <laughs> Let's hit him with the emojis. Hold up. Whoa, whoa. Hit him with the eggplant emoji. <laughs> hit him with the eggplant. Hit him with the port 3001. Yo, oh shit, more people are joining. I am an AI NPC. Oh, we're done. We already have the AI NPC. Game over. <laughs> That's cool. I don't think I've ever had this many people online at the same time. Four people. That's a record. AI attack. Slash tickle. <laughs> That's definitely not been programmed in the game. There is no slash tickle. Okay, I'm looking at fireworks. The production AI platform built for developers. Okay, that's good. Um, very fast. Ooh, look at this. Nice. 200 tokens a second. Um, let's look at their docs. Querying text models. Using the API. Oh, they only have Python frameworks. It's all right, we can use fetch. Okay. I mean, Should we try this? Let's see what the difference is between, was it half? 12 seconds for fireworks and OpenAI is, well, 12 milliseconds? 12 tenths of a second? OpenAI is 28 tenths, so about double, and they do 130 tokens per second, and GPT does 100 so not the, not that much faster overall I'd say it's probably negligible difference um, what am I using for backend yeah I'm using serverless um, it's kind of like a framework that uses AWS lambda um, yeah Uh, okay, so yeah, I don't think fireworks would be that different to OpenAI. Let me continue my consultation with ChatGPT. I've introduced multiple AI characters that can talk to each other. I don't want to keep the WebSocket open while waiting for the LLM chat completion. Wait. WebSocket open? No, the WebSocket is always open. Uh, maybe I'll just make a separate fetch call. That could actually be the go. I think I'm gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna do fetch calls. Let me get a big red marker. Oh, I already have an API call accidentally here. Yeah, we're doing this, but we're doing big red. No web socket. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, so let me show you guys how you define 
um, new functions in serverless. So there's this overall YAML file called the serverless YAML, YML, and it looks like this. You give it your uh, provider, the name, and um, tokens. We're going to rename this. Ooh, this is actually true. MPC sim. Um, we're going to make a whole new thing. Um, yep. And then I've defined all my functions in a separate YAML file and you can just reference it like that. So we open up the functions YAML. Um, and here you see I have my WebSocket handlers and my normal REST handlers here. So I'm going to create a new REST handler. I'm going to call it generate LLM response. And we'll just copy the uh, yeah, we'll copy the login kind of info here. Then instead of the login method, we will create a new handler called LLM dot create. I'm gonna rename it from LL generate to create because that's kind of what it's called in the um in the open AI thing. So um, we're going to look at one of these handlers here. This is the basic hello handler, but we're actually going to copy hmm. interestingly, this doesn't do the cores. I wonder why. Maybe it's not needed. I'm going to copy user off. Um, by opening it in File Explorer. And we'll call it LLM.js. Open that up. Remove the stuff we don't need. Probably these. Um, wait, and then we'll copy the login function. That's probably. Oh, I figured out why we don't have because we defined that. Wait, what? Oh, here. Okay. Greasy fat nerd. Hey, good to see you. Am I hacking the mainframe? No, I'm developing the mainframe. <laughs> profile update handler, user profile update events, HTTP, core is true. Is that AI generated? <laughs> I can't tell when Blizzard's actually talking or when he's got his AI to just talk for him. <laughs> uh, we've really hit that dead internet theory. It's just so hard to tell who's real these days. Mohammed Pepe, thanks for the follow. Halal snack bag, nice. It's always AI. <laughs> Damn. Blizzard's just always AI. Okay. Um nice we have a really basic endpoint here we don't need this UUI we'll keep channel coming out DynamoDB I don't know if we'll need it I don't know. definitely need JSON web token oh shit you know what I also just realized there needs to be some kind of server running for the NPC to render. Now I'll worry about that next. Let's just get it to create text first. XY asks, tip for beginners on coding. Uh, yeah, I always say the same tip and it's just like follow your excitement or passion. Um, so just work on something you think is cool 
and that will drive yourself to work on it more you know what i mean so for me it was like originally game development that's why i did coding as long as you have that why reason you know maybe it's not a particular project you're interested in but if you have that why you know it just continues your work and the more you do it the more you learn it just get in those hours showing up every day some days you won't feel like it but you just show up and you do your work or just learn something new or work on something or make a project yeah making projects is obviously great taking screenshots of your face on real motion for analysis is great <laughs> big smile um okay we're gonna not secure this while we're testing so no web, web token stuff um no token response we're gonna just quickly integrate chat gpt and yeah and just call it from the front end it should be pretty simple um so the first thing we do is npm install open ai i'm pretty sure let's have a look at the docs here intro npm install open ai for sure do we need the at 4.0 let's do it without the at and see what version it installs big smile eh? yes definitely a big smile oh I installed it in the wrong place I wanted to only install it in the back end so and I also want to use yarn so let's do that again Tongu thanks for the like Mohammed, I think I already shouted you out but yeah thanks again for the follow um ooh back end has install oh it's yarn add yarn add open ai zai thanks for the follow z x y um chinmaya hello hello hi hello Deberito, I wonder what the pricing model will be for AI games in the future because the constant run of the compute will be expensive theoretically. Um, maybe. You could say that about any like server side AI stuff. But yeah, I guess LLM generation is more expensive than just basic server comms. But yeah, I don't know. KDV, hey, what am I making? I'm making a a game where you can own an NPC and the NPC talks to other NPCs with AI. Yo, Michael Jackson, you're back. KDV, thanks for the follow. How are you guys doing? Um, okay, so I just installed OpenAI's NPM module. I just want to check if it's version 4. Why look in the package JSON? It's four point two eight. Ooh. Package JSON 4.28. That might be unstable. Um we're gonna keep it. We're gonna live life on the edge. No no no, let's do. Let's get the official. <laughs> I just wanted to check. We should probably get the official. There could be some weird behavior with this unofficial one. Um, what kind of game? It's like a web browser game. I'll show you it, what it looks like. It looks like this. Um, currently, you're a character and you can move around, but in the future, it'll be only NPCs. And um, actually, maybe you could still be a character and move around. And the NPCs will talk. Actually, yeah, why not? Why not have the character as well? Or I don't know. We'll see. LPM, thanks for the follow. How come I'm so hung up on not having the WebSocket open? Oh, I've moved on from that, Justin. We're gonna do just a REST API call. The the WebSocket actually is open. It's just AWS charges me for how long I keep it open and um yeah. That's pretty much it. Tell us the truth. The bull is a pimp.
The bull is a pimp. <laughs> Todd, where's the AI again? It's tricking me. <laughs> uh, I just realized that this will also have that 30 second. Anyway, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. If we run into issues, we'll find out what happens um, later. I'm not worried at the moment. Um, and then we import it like this in our function code. Import OpenAI from OpenAI, OpenAI organize. Is that my organization? Do we need organization? I don't think we actually needed organization. That is my organization. Interesting. Um, and I'm pretty sure we also need our API key. Yes. Um, I'm going to have to do this off the screen. Let me just make my API keys. Wait, where have I put those? Here we go. Okay, I've created the secret. Now how do I add it? Um, wait. I think it's just process.n. We'll find out. Uh, how do I API key process.n of the open AI key? How much do I pay for compute every month currently? You mean like LLM compute? Nothing much. Like if you don't count GPT plus, probably only like twenty dollars additional a month. Blizzard says I run on pure unalterated sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, pure AI generated sarcasm. Duck fam. Bonoa. I'm sorry, bro. I don't. I can't. I don't understand Vietnamese. I do like Viet Gunner though. He has a cool song. Okay. Um, and how do we create this stream? How about not streaming, making request? Hmm? They don't have a making request example for Node.js? That's silly. I'll just do npm open AI search. Should have it here. Open AI, yeah. Chat completions create. Open AI chat completion create. Yes. Um let me check how we get the data like this. And we do do, do data data dot email. Okay. Um, and now we define our message. So we're going to get the front end to send through the system prompt. Um, so we'll go roll system content and then data dot system prompt. Uh, 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 what did I do wrong here? This would be a comma. 
What framework do I use for the game? The front end framework is React JS, which is a very it's not 